It's just gone one at seven at ten. Simon Dool going to join us out of Pakistan. That'll happen in about ten minutes or so. Jamie Wall, though, thank you again. The most independent, trustworthy sports journalist in this country, I do believe, and I know I shouldn't. But by God, those Helberg Awards, three hours of tedium last night. Why does it have to take so effing long, mate? Uh, g'day, man. Um, yeah, good question. I was just talking with your producer off here. Uh, about how it just kind of feels like watching a filmed school assembly, really, and, and who ever enjoyed those. Uh, I I really think that, you know, given the fact that in the last few years they have made some interesting choices with who's been winning it. You had Israel Adesanya um, the other year, who, who who at least created some 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 shareable content with his with his his speech, and and this year you've got Zoe Sadowski Sinnott and Nico Porteous, you know, two young, interesting athletes from sports we don't usually talk about very much. I just think there's just some scope to just kind of move away from the way that they've always been doing it, which is just putting a whole bunch of people in penguin suits in a room and then dragging the whole thing out, like you said. Like, there's got to be a better way to do it, you know, even if it's just just doing it online or, or something. Like, just get someone who can understand – what an audience under the age of 70 wants yep, to actually yep, watch yep, yep. and and do it that way. And so, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I watched it for about five minutes and then um, gave up and, and watched something else. Yeah, well, look, I mean, look, and I got so many texts from people, uh, you know, are you watching this? And I said, okay, I turned it on. I just look, it's just garbage. You know, the presentation is just so self-rubbing cheese bollocks it's just you know and and it's also unnecessarily politically correct and everything i've I've said for years jamie look make it a one-hour highlights package that's all you need here's the highlights here's the winning speech and let the athletes get on with it they don't want to sit around for four hours they want to get on the lash mate this is the first time that these wonderful overachieving people get to hang with other of their ilk that's what it's about it's not about us as a television audience watching look just give us the winners and let them get on with it I'd, honestly the whoever runs the help awards i'd love to know the viewing figures because they'd never give us those because they'd be hideously embarrassing but do you honestly think this is the best way to present your showcase i just can't see how you could say yes to that question no but i mean also Martin, you know given that we work in uh, journalism i don't think that we, we're we're in any position to be um, pointing any fingers at back slapping events and yeah. um, you know yeah, that, that sort of thing yeah, good point. however you're, you're you're completely right like i i just feel like it's it's more it's one of those things that's done for the benefit of the people who are putting it on rather than the people who are getting the awards like i don't think um zoe sadowski senate or nico porteous want to sit through three hours of that nonsense um i just and and also just it says a lot about just kind of the state of broadcasting at the moment in, in New Zealand and not just Sky, I'm talking about everybody and just like how little money there is to actually put on some sort of production. You know, you 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 would you would think this given that this is New Zealand, given sport the way that sport uh the sports position in society, uh this would be the biggest kind of moment of the year and it just kinda looked just a bit tacky and yeah, and, and, cheap. and cheap. Yeah. Yeah. And look, and you're right about the younger audience because you know this is this is what you're meant to be looking at. I mean, I'm old. I'm one of the slow dying members of the audience. You know what you're trying to look at is you're trying to actually attract and engage those who are aged between about I suppose ten and especially say maybe up to about thirty, but especially in that kind of fifteen to twenty five. Look, you've got amazing achievements. They sell themselves. The pictures sell themselves. I think with Sky. Half the problem I have is that they just seem to be black, what we call black hole fillers in this business. And that's just put something on to occupy the TV screen for four hours and then we can look away and find something else to fill a black hole with. You know, there's there's no creativity, there's no innovation, there's no excitement around. Let's move on from that, though. Did the, did the right winners win? Yeah, I think so. I remember we were having a chat yesterday about... Uh, you know, are the are the right people going to win these awards? I didn't think there was ever going to be any any way other way this was this was going to go. The Black Ferns were always going to win the awards that they were they were nominated for. I don't think how you I don't think you could possibly give Team of the Year to anyone else. No, I don't think so. Certainly, no. certainly, certainly not the All Blacks. Um, uh, Wayne Smith was always going to win um, Coach of the Year, and um, if you're going to put it to a vote, I think the Black Ferns key play to win that when that rugby world cup final was always going to win that too. Agree. Uh, that to me, that to me says a lot um, about uh, news, uh, you know, how we talk a lot about 
how people aren't as interested in rugby anymore or anything. Well, that just showed um, that there's still blooming daylight between rugby and everything else uh, when it comes to sort of coverage um, and what what will really people get people you know into a stadium um, and get them watching on TV because you know in order for that to become the most important mo- sporting moment of last year people had to see it and the majority of those people saw it happen live uh, where they were at Eden Park or watching it on TV um, and the, yeah like I said with the with those uh, the young um, snow sports. Uh, athletes that we have um, you know if you win a gold medal that immediately puts you uh, right at the top of the rank to win um, a Helbig Award especially in an individual sport that's why Lisa Carrington's got um, enough gold and enough silver to probably start her own um, uh, mint yeah they're in uh, smeltery and, and, <laughs> and why the why the rowers uh, seem to get it it's because it's uh, the criteria being that if you're the best in the world at what you do um, then you should be getting the, the highest awards and that's what happens so I don't really have any complaints over who won it um, the debate about, uh, you know, comparing a skier with um, uh, a guy who races uh, cars or a squash player, that's something else entirely um, that, that, you know, we, we've, we've had year on year up until this. But in terms of just honouring the winners, I think that, um, you know, this is a great way of doing it. And, uh, and maybe, you know, to our point we were talking about before, given the youth and, and the fact that it's a women's rugby team winning these, um, it shows the kind of changing demographics and the way they should be presenting these awards. Jamie Wall, the most independent, trustworthy sports journalist in this country. Finally, uh, we were the, the the Zoom call involving all the Super Rugby coaches a couple of days ago. Unfortunately, we had to go on air, so we recorded and kind of watched it back. But what did you particularly learn, if anything, from 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 that Zoom? Well, you didn't miss much because um, there was nothing to be learned. Um, I only tuned in for the Scott Robertson portion of it just to see, it, see if he'd say anything else like he did last week but obviously he's learned his lesson because he's very tight-lipped on uh what he thinks about the all-black coaching situation um, look i tell you what, the, can i even a... say he even sent me a text you know that text where you got the oh do it i've done something dumb <laughs> he said he sent me that this is what i really like about it i mean i'm not going to bust his cover or anything tell me tell anyone what he actually says but he's a good dude he corresponds with it he answers and that and when i sent him a text and said fantastic mate great headline to just do it uh. <laughs> and just, look, I love his sense of humour. I know he was a bit mischievous when he said that, but I love his sense of humour about it. And I thought, I thought he would shut himself down when it came to that big zoom. Yeah, yeah. Well, he he most certainly did, and he knew it was coming. And and NZ Rugby had their uh, had I think half the comp st- half of that zoom call was made up of NZ Rugby comp staff, just in case he did he did say something. Um, but other than that, it was very straight up and down. Um, it's a shame it was supposed to be an event like the Super Rugby Open launched last week, but obviously the weather had something to say about that. Um, so it's really kind of no one's fault that it got downgraded to a Zoom, and those things are just boring as shit, and it's really hard to get anything out of anyone on them. So for now, I think um, you know we have to just kind of wait for the competition to start because it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this, how this season plays out with the All Blacks dipping in and out of of the teams um and i don't i personally don't i'm not reading too much into these supposedly revolutionary new laws um the t- the ones about uh the the timekeeping uh, are actually already laws they the referees just haven't been enforcing them very well um and um and really i, I don't think the other one's going to make that that much of a difference anyway just with the cards um, all they're doing is just kind of tidying up what's a, or at least attempting to tidy up what's a very, very messy area around um, the disciplinary uh, role of the of the of the referee and the TMO. Uh, when really what they should be doing and what they basically admitted that they they want to do on on a separate Zoom call that happened on on the same day um, was that they want to copy the NRL bunker um, and have some sort of report system. And that's effectively what they've kind of done here, which is by making it so the referee can only just flash a yellow card and then have it dealt with by some by the TMO off the field. Um, they've kind of created a kind of in-game report system. Um, so, I mean, that, that'll that be kind of interesting, but at the same time, I don't think it's really going to alter the way the game is played particularly much. But I can tell you one thing, we're all going to have our stopwatches out whenever t- someone's taking a shot at goal because that's, this has just put a target on the, on the referee's heads, another one of something they could potentially screw up.